with all that in mind, then, uh, there's a, a passage from St. Ambrose. He lived in the 4th century. He was St. Augustine's mentor. And he has a wonderful commentary on the book of Luke, on the Gospel of Luke. It's actually the oldest commentary on Luke that we possess. There were a series of homilies given by Origen of Alexandria in the 3rd century on Luke, but the earliest complete commentary is by St. Ambrose of Milan. He was a, a doctor of the church. It's really hard to get a copy of this in translation, but of course I have one. Um, and so I want to read to you from St. Ambrose's commentary on John the Baptist's words. He says this, The Baptist gave a fitting response to each kind of people. To the tax collectors, he said that they should not exact payment beyond what was appointed. To the soldiers, that they should not make false accusations or rob anyone, by which he meant that their pay was fixed, so that wanting to have more, they could not resort to plunder. These and other precepts are appropriate for all occupations, and the practice of compassion is shared. Thus it is a common precept that the basic necessities of life must be provided for all occupations, all ages, and all people. Neither the tax collector nor the soldier is exempted, neither the farmer nor the townsman, neither the rich man nor the pauper. All are commanded in common to give to the one who does not have. Compassion is the fullness of the virtues, and therefore the form of the perfect virtue is placed before all. And that's St. Ambrose on the Gospel of Luke, Book 2, Paragraph 77. Now, why do I bring that passage up? I think it's important because, two reasons. First, notice what Ambrose is saying. No matter who you are, no matter what state in life you have, and no matter what occupation you engage in, you are called to justice, you are called to virtue, and you are called to compassion. It's easy to imagine a situation where someone who might be a follower of Christ uh, might try to make excuses for themselves. You know, I can't help but engage in extortion. I'm part, you know, I'm part of this corrupt system of tax collectors. Or I'm a soldier, and so, you know, plunder is just part of what we do. This is just part of the habit of warfare. No, no. Uh, Ambrose is really clear here that every Christian, whatever state they're in, none of us are exempted from obeying the commandments and from practicing charity and almsgiving. And so I think it's really important to put that before us now um, because during this season of Advent, it can be easy to think about preparing for Christmas by setting up the Christmas lights or going to Christmas parties or um, you know going to Mass or whatnot. We don't want to stop just at that. We also have to prepare ourselves morally and ethically. And so one of the great Western Christian traditions that goes back ancient times is the practice of almsgiving during the season of Advent and during the season of Christmas. Finding those who are poor, who are less fortunate than you, and engaging in corporal works of mercy and in acts of charity during the Advent season is a great way to do penance, not through fasting, but through almsgiving, giving away what we have, whether it be food or clothing, to the homeless, to the orphans, to widows, to the elderly, to shut in whatever way, shape, or form you might be able to engage in that charity to do that, especially during the Advent season. And also, if you're in a business situation or you're in an occupation in which you might be surrounded by people who engage in immoral activity, to take a look at that and ask yourself, can I engage in this occupation justly, right? Um, and keeping the commandments, very important. Um, there's no separation for John the Baptist or St. Ambrose or Catholics today between our uh, Christian life and our business life. Our business life has to be governed by the same ethical ideals, and by the same moral principles that our religious life and our life of worship should be. And, and the Advent season is a great time to remember that uh, because John the Baptist is basically saying to the people, if you don't do that, you're going to end up, in, instead of ending up in the granary of the Messiah, you're going to end up in the chaff and burning like an unquenchable fire. So there's always an edge to the good news, right? It's good news for those who repent, turn away, and begin to live the life of charity that Christ calls us to. And so in this Advent season, I just would... Um, call to your attention and to mine, all of us, to remember that the corporal works of mercy, especially feeding the hungry, clothing the, the, the naked, um, visiting the sick and the elderly, uh, and giving to the poor, those are, those are 
These are not optionals. These are essentials for preparing our hearts for the coming of the Messiah.